Hi everyone, and welcome back to Across the Pond. This is a monthly show where me and QJ, say hi QJ. Hi. Where we talk about things that we've done in the month. We talk about our yearly projects. Not yearly. Our year yeah. projects for this year. Because you are playing 52 games in 52 weeks and reading 52 books in 52 weeks, which mm-hmm. is, mm, you know, going well, isn't it? It's really hard. Some of us are, are, are caught up with our projects and doing really well, and uh, some of us are not. But that's not going to stop yeah, us well, from talking some... about them, is it? <laughs> some of us took two projects that are really big things, and some of us yes. took one project, which is watching 52 movies in 52 weeks, which is like nothing. <laughs> yes. Well, some of us... <laughs> My project is basically what normal people do already. <laughs> yeah. You also go to uni, though. You're very busy. Yeah, it's and true, I am. I would not be able to play 52 games in no. 52 weeks. And well, or, or do 52 books. Before I started, before I took on these projects, I just had, I think I mentioned this in the last video, I just had way too much free time and I didn't know how to manage it very well and I just felt really useless. Yeah. And after I started these projects, I guess my boss was like, we're going to give you um, double the hours that you've normally been giving, getting... And so I'm like, oh, and I'm working a lot, which is great because I have to pay bills, but now I barely have time yeah. to do anything at home. <laughs> so it's a challenge. Oh man, I commend you. I commend you for trying to do these two big projects, Thank but you. I feel like um, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. That's all right. I'd rather be struggling than stagnating. Okay. So you did, have you played any video games? Have you finished Are we going to start with me? I mean, we started with you last week, the okay. month, so um, yeah, I assume, I actually, I assume we will. The first game I've officially finished this year was Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS. Yay. Yeah, and I really enjoyed it. Um, unlike what I'm trying to do with Captain Toad, I'm not trying to 100% the game, so I'll go through the levels, and if I don't get all the star coins or all the, you know, little secret challenges... Um, that's okay, I really just want to finish the levels without dying three dozen times. Because um, some of them are yeah. really difficult, and it's all muscle memory, and it's really, really aggravating, to be honest, because I get really ragey when I die, and I'll often die in really stupid ways. Like, I'll just jump straight off the edge of the platform when I'm trying to, like, jump on a Goomba, and it's horrible how terrible I am at these games, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not trying to, um, I wasn't trying to 100% the game, but if I saw, like, if I could see where yeah, a star coin that's how was, I, play games. I, I would try and go get it, because I was just trying to do, I was just trying to do my best yeah. at, with what I had, but if I couldn't find one, I was like, eh, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I finished the game, and it went through the end credits, and it felt awesome, because nice. a lot of these games I'm playing, I feel like I would play a few levels, and be like, alright, you know, that was fun, and I would then I would normally put the game down and be like, what else What else do I got going on? I feel like I should be doing dishes or something worthwhile <laughs> or something. Not that dishes are that worthwhile, but I feel like they're... Whatever. That's pretty much what I did with Super Mario 3D Land. I kind of... I did about six levels and then kind of went, nah, nah, I'm just going to do something else. You didn't enjoy it? I found that... I found that the controls were kind of clunky and the levels didn't really feel like they had any real interesting design to them so i just it was kind of hard to because i don't really with handheld games i find that they're annoying to control anyway because i have giant meaty hands so <laughs> like precision controls on a 3ds just doesn't work for me so like that was kind of annoying me and the fact that just nothing seemed interesting like i think it was because i'm playing it off the back of like super mario galaxy and super mario galaxy has interesting stuff on around every single corner and then i play super mario 3d land and it's kind of like eh. No, just I think I boxes. understand what you're saying. It's kind of like the levels are kind of flat, not necessarily yeah, not necessarily in the two-dimensional sense because it is very three-dimensional looking, but there's yeah. not a lot of I guess there's interesting not, there's not much things going on. to look at because yeah. when I think about playing that versus playing Captain Toad where the levels are very puzzly and there's Everything that's hidden is hidden in a very intricate way where you have to go through like a specific pattern to get at what you need and it really kind of gets your brain going in the way you have to solve it each level whereas games like yeah. Super Mario 3D Land it's they're very linear 
So I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, it just I, I think it just wasn't for me, to be honest. It, it, it's probably an okay game if that's what you're looking for. But Yeah, it was definitely yeah, easy for me just, to just power straight through and... Yeah. You know, it was helping me with, I guess, my just 3DS skills, because, you know, it's a really simple game, but I still don't have the skills to play really simple games, so it was getting me used to that, I suppose. And I'm also playing, right now I'm playing through, which is so much more difficult than playing through Donkey Kong Country Returns on the 3DS. It makes me laugh every time, because that's a horrible idea. <laughs> Because I know, I know how much that's making you rage quit and how much it's annoying you. It's really, really hard. You know, it's the perfect, it's the perfect level of challenging for me because it's also just a, a completely linear game where I don't have to think too hard yeah. about what I'm supposed to do. Um, like, I can't think of any examples. Like, when Shay tried to make me play Metroid... Like, I literally had no idea yeah. what I was supposed to do one second to the next. And he'd be sitting there like, just go through this door. And I'm like, what door? I can't see anything. Like, it's all, <laughs> like, this moldy screen is, I can't see anything. <laughs> uh, I had exactly the same experience with Metro Prime. It's like, cool, a big environment. And I, where do I go? What do I do? Yeah, Metroid oh, I just Prime. walk around a bunch. Did I just say right. Metroid? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean... People probably could work out what you're on about. Metro Prime is just like, oh, I walk around a bunch and I shoot some doors and they open and I shoot yeah. some things and they die. Well, like, I couldn't tell one really thing happens. from another. Games like Donkey Kong Country Returns are very linear, so I just know, like, move from left to right, bounce on some things, avoid some things, and I can just, like, move forward in yeah. that and I can also just grind straight through it. The thing I like about um, Donkey Kong Country Returns is there's a lot of rhythm to it. Like, once you get the rhythm of a level, you can kind of easily yeah. do it. But it usually takes me about um, 30 tries to get the rhythm of a level, because yeah, I don't I, think... I know that feel. Shay mentioned... Sorry, Spiegel mentioned that it was... Um, I think it was proven that you can't get through those levels on the first try, because you have to figure out what's coming and what you need to do yeah. by trial and error, and just use muscle memory, basically, which is yeah. kind of really unfair. But... <laughs> Yeah, some of, some of those levels are definitely like that. I, I know what you're yeah. on about. But it's it's a good game. Are you going for all of the um, Kong levels and banana coins and all that nonsense? I assume you're not, right? Oh, no, definitely like not. the collectibles? No. <laughs> no, like, I do the same thing as... I think I did, but I got, like, I nearly got them all, and then I just kind of went, nah, this isn't, this isn't happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was having so much trouble just freaking staying alive that I was like, I'm not risking any more stupid balloons and continues... To get that K or that banana coin, it was yeah, awful. It's it's a struggle. Yeah, I did the same thing as Super Mario 3D Land, where if I saw it, I would try and yeah. get it. But if it was too out of reach or if I couldn't find it, I was like, no, it's great. You're getting left behind. Yeah. <laughs> Although you haven't finished that yet, so that doesn't count towards the 52-52. No, I have not finished yet, and I don't know if I'll finish it for a while because I usually. <laughs> play for several minutes and scream a lot and punch my hand and then I put it down and play Picross or something something relaxing. <laughs> something peaceful yes. that, that doesn't make you want to like kill people. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the other game? I know you finished another one, didn't you? Mm, uh, no. I've... Didn't you finish? No, I'm playing Kevin through Pike? a couple, but they're taking me a long time. I'm still playing Heart Gold, but uh, I was having that um, like roadblock where I have yeah. no idea what I'm supposed to do next in the game, and I can't remember what I was doing before because I'd put it down for a week or so. Yeah, and, and you just can't be bothered to get yeah. back into it. Well, now I have to, I have yeah, to go online have and that. get a guide because every town I go to, there is like nothing to do, or there's people that are like, oh, you can't go through yeah. here yet. And I'm like, why? <laughs> 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 so I have to go find a guide. Didn't you finish Captain Toad, yeah. though? No, you not yet. Toad, I'm so you? close to the end, no? but... Uh. I could have finished it last night, okay. but I was um, reading instead, and I fell asleep. So, I didn't so get to we're what, like either. eight and a half weeks, eight and a half weeks in. Like I said, I'm very far behind, <laughs> but I'm working a lot. I need to pay bills. <laughs> so that's yeah. I mean, I and mean, that's I, the whole point of this year I, is I felt like I was stagnating and doing nothing, and so now I'm I'm doing a lot. Just not stuff that I can talk about on across game. the pond. <laughs> Okay, so you're also reading 52 books, right? Yes. 
Have you have you read any? Okay, so I finished the fourth Penderwick novel, which I talked about the first three in the last episode. Um, yep. And I was sitting, and I was reading the fourth one while I was, I was sitting at a table in this public place, and, okay, so I just adore these books. I've, like, put my heart into them. And when I finished it, and so normally when I finish a book, even if I really, really love it and I don't want it to end, I finish it and I'm just like, oh, like, that was great. I'm glad I finished it. That's nice. You know, I feel I've accomplished something. That was a great book. Um, but when I turned the last page of this book, I sort of, like, fell over it and, like, leaned <laughs> over on the table. And I just was so sad that it was over. And I, like, <laughs> wanted to cry because I'm like, it can't. It can't be over. I know. I was so heartbroken <laughs> that it was done. And I don't think I've ever felt that way about a series. Probably be, I probably would have with I, Harry I Potter. I um, but I was really young when I first finished it, and I don't think I contemplated uh, how big a deal it was. Um, and so I was, yeah, I was heartbroken for several minutes. And then I immediately went yeah. online and realized that um, there is a fifth one coming out soon. And so I was like, there's light in my life again. <laughs> <laughs> but the fifth one will be the final one, so I will, I will be permanently yeah. heartbroken when that one is over because wow. I just can't. It's it's that kind of feeling when you finish something and you're like, what do I do with my life now? Yeah, what, what, I'm, I feel yeah. empty. I get that whenever Netflix release an original series and they release every single episode at the same time, and I marathon <laughs> the whole thing, and then at the end I'm just like, but what? Now what? What? Do, what do I do now? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. But yeah, I absolutely love like, this world. It's a struggle. <clears throat> My voice just yeah. went all weird there. I absolutely love this world and this family in this series, and I don't know what I'm going to do without it when it's over. So you, this month you've read one book, right? No, no, no. I also read... Um... <gasps> you did more? Oh, <laughs> Shut yeah. up! <laughs> um, oh, shoot, I cannot remember... That wasn't even sarcasm. I'm genuinely excited. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot remember the author's name. It is something Irish. Um, but the book is called Brooklyn. And it is right. the inspiration for a movie that came out, um, I believe, last year or like very early this year, probably last year. Um, right. And it was a it was a movie that I like fell in love with. Um, it was absolutely fantastic, and I was really sad that it didn't get more attention. Um, and I think it right. only was up for like best actress as far as awards go, so it's not going to get any attention from that. Right. So sadly, I don't think. Many people are gonna watch this. Was movie. the movie also called Brooklyn? Yes, Brooklyn. Okay, uh, I'll remember that in editing, and I might watch it. Okay, I probably won't though. I don't know. I would <laughs> I be might, interested to see what you think of that. I, I don't know if it's your kind of movie, but I think I think it was yeah. brilliant. <sighs> I, I've watched a couple of movies this month that I wouldn't have thought were my kind of movie, and I enjoyed them, so I'm okay. willing to give stuff a go. So yeah, well. I'm open, you know. Yeah, you can have your own kind of challenges. So the book was really yeah. interesting because it was very, very well written. I loved the writing. I'd like to... <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my cats are fighting on either side of the uh, screen door. And it's really, really funny. <laughs> I wonder if you can pick that up. <clears throat> anyway, the book was really well written. I'd like to read more of the author's stuff. Um, what was interesting about it, it is... I normally love books that have a lot of emotion in them because I like getting like emotionally involved with the characters and what they're going through. And this book was completely emotionless. Like it was, huh. it was the story of this girl named Ailish, and she goes from Ireland to America to get a job, and she meets a guy and goes through homesickness. And um, the movie is a really really nice love story, and it's also kind of a coming of age story and sort of like she's like finding out who she is and where she needs to be. Um, and I guess the book is a love story too, but it's so lacking of emotion that it's almost hard to call it that. And what's interesting about uh -huh. it is it's just going through her life and going through her thoughts, but there's no, you know, epiphany. There's no aha moment. There's no, this is where I'm finding out what I'm supposed to be and where I'm supposed to lived my life and like this means this it's literally just like going through her life step by step and at one point you know the the book is over and it was like all right it was kind huh. of kind of autobiographical except that she wasn't real so i was yeah, reading that that's... and it was kind of like hmm. that's an interesting yeah. sort of story yeah and i think i prefer interesting 
I prefer going through, like, all the emotional trauma, um, as long as it's not badly done. So it was, it was a really interesting um, other end of the spectrum, like, reading through a really cool story without being emotionally involved. Um, huh, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so it was a really I, neat I can't read. I can't any ex- other examples of that. Yeah. I definitely liked the movie that's a cool. lot better. Um, they had to change a few things just for the sake of how they made the movie very emotional. Um, but I do like yeah. the movie a lot better, surprisingly. But the book was also very mm. neatly written. I might have to watch that movie then. Yeah, that would be cool. I'd love to no. talk to someone about it. It's one of my new favorites. I can't wait for it to come out. Yeah, That's cool. So is that all of your books? I think so. I read a lot of comic books Yay. this month. Which comic books did you read, just out of interest? Let's see. Comic book chat. Last, last month I didn't get to talk about Lumberjanes. Because Lumberjanes reminded me... Lumberjanes is like the best thing ever. Lumberjanes reminded me a lot of the Penderwicks. <laughs> so I read those sort of at the same time. And I was like, this is just so uh, okay. adorable. Um, I Lumberjanes is... I want to see Lumberjanes as a Saturday morning cartoon sort of thing. Aww, like a 20 minute cartoon perfect. thing. I would love that. It would be so good. I finished Harley Quinn Volume 2, which I didn't love. Yeah. Um, I liked Volume 1 a lot better, and I th- I'm guessing it was a different writer. Um, and I didn't like it that much because I didn't really love the Power Girl story, and I also felt like the writer... Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that story. I felt like the writer was making Harley extremely ditzy and kind of dumb, and I don't... Yeah. I don't like that portrayal of her because I feel like... I feel like I want to say the real Harley Quinn is, like, she fakes being ditzy and dumb, but she's really, like, a very dark yep. genius. So I yeah. didn't love the way she was written in that one. But it's, I don't know, the jokes are still pretty cute. Yeah, that, that was, I, I thought that pretty much the same thing. I thought it was, it was fun, it was cleverly written, but I kind of had a few, it wasn't perfect. Should we segue straight into know, your movies? Straight into my movies, yeah. should we go? Should we go? Let's go. Although I kind of want to take a quick comics, though, because I want to tell everyone that the current Groot run that's come out, Volume 1 of Groot, is like the best thing Aww. ever, and everyone should read it. If you want to read comics, read that. It's heartwarming. It's beautiful. I love it. So, QJ. Yes. As you know from last month, I'm going to give you a list of all of the movies that I watched this month. One of them is going to be a lie. All right. I'm going to describe each one. I'm going to briefly describe each one. Then I'm going to ask you which one you think I didn't watch. Okay. And then I'm going to go into more detail on some of them just because I want to. All right. So the first, the first movie I watched this month, and I know Kyle, I don't know if he's still going to listen to this. Kyle will be happy about this. I watched Alien, which I thought was quite good. Um, it does exactly what it wants to do perfectly. Like it's, it's really good at building an atmosphere. It's good at the spoops. It's, it's like it's an interesting film. The the whole sort of everything it tries to do it does well. But the thing I found is that I don't particularly like atmospheric sort of horror type things. Mm-hmm. So it kind of wasn't it wasn't for me. But I can appreciate that it does everything it wants to do pretty much perfectly. Yeah. And From what I remember, that was a very it's, well. It's made a good movie. film. Yeah, I yeah. can't remember if um, I loved it. I saw it a long time ago, but I think I I really appreciated it for what it was. Yeah. It, that that's yeah. pretty much what I'm trying to say. Is I pretty much agree with what you're it, saying. It's not my type of thing, but I I appreciate it for what it tries to do, and it does it all well. And it's also a really good example of like really good practical effects. Like all of the ships look pretty on point, even though it was made in like 1989. Oh. I want to say I'm terrible at noticing or that 79. Kind of thing. But all of the practical effects looked really good, apart from like every now and then the puppets for the aliens looked weird, but the ships <laughs> looked great. One thing I want to talk about about an alien. Is that she kept going back for the cat? Stop going back for the cat. Why? <laughs> it's so annoying. I'm just, just sitting there like, oh. just leave the cat. It's fine. Oh, that makes me think of Captain Marvel and Chewie. <laughs> but like, there's so many times in Alien where Ripley nearly dies because of the cat, and I'm just sitting there like, ah, oh, just leave it. It's fine. Cats do ruin just leave everything. the cat. As much as I like cats, stop. It is always like a really dumb trope in movies where like. One of, like the yeah. main character's father dies just because they're going back to get the dog. It's like what, like in Man of Steel? Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you don't need like you know. I'm sorry, Peta, but people are more important than animals, and it's not that. Yeah. Also. Ugh. 
I'm sorry, Zack Snyder, but your son has superpowers. Why are you going into a tornado to get the dog? Because the world's oh, not Man ready. of Steel is so bad. No, I like Man, man of Steel. Man of Steel is so bad. I hate Man of Steel so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a bad movie. Um, the second movie I watched was a movie called Laser Team. It's a it's a sci-fi action comedy by Rooster Teeth. It's kind of an indie thing. It, it was crowdfunded. I kind of wanted to watch it because I like a lot of Rooster Teeth's work, but I found that a lot of the jokes kind of fell on their face, and it it could have been a lot better, and I kind of wish it had been a lot better. I don't really have that much to say on that one, to be honest. The third film, and you know this one isn't a lie because it's Deadpool, and I've seen it twice, and it's the best, and I love it, and <laughs> uh, it's good. I, I'll probably go more into detail in a bit on that one, just because okay. I don't want to clutter this section. What was the that. second one you said? Rooster Teeth? Laser Team. Laser Team. Yeah, Rooster Teeth's film. Yeah. Um, the fourth film I saw was Cars 2. Okay. The Silence. I was expecting more of a reaction to that. Um, I kind of wanted to watch Cars 2 just so I could rip into it with a legitimate, like, actually knowing that it's bad. And now I can, because it, it, it's bad. It's like, oh, Pixar, where did your imagination go? Oh, wait, you got bought by... You got bought out and the merchandising money. What is happened too much, in Cars 2, Dan? <sighs> they. I don't know, because, like, this is a test. This is you testing me, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they go and they go, they go and do. <laughs> it's so boring. They Okay, they're in Radiator Springs, uh, Lightning McQueen and um, uh, Mater, and they. They have to go to an international race thing that Lightning McQueen has to do, and then. There's an oil guy, and he's trying to make a... There's a special camera thing, and it's gonna kill everyone or something. And they get all, they get all like, moved into this, like, spy espionage nonsense. It's so boring, QJ. Why are you asking me to, like... It's so it's boring. It's weird, because I'm trying to test you, and I totally don't remember the stuff you're talking about, but I have a feeling that <laughs> no, it was... it's so bad. It was, like... It was definitely, like, one of it's... the worst movies I've ever seen. It... it... Yeah. Made me want I to know, right? shame it's... Pixar for their shamefulness. Yeah. Even I was it's watching like... it, when I first watched it, I watched it with my nephew, and I think he was like seven at the time, and we left, and he's like, I didn't really like that. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, like, I don't remember much about Cars 1 because I watched it when, I, when it first came out, and I was like 12 or something. But, like, if I remember rightly, the first Cars was about, like, a small town people and learning how to be humble and all that stuff yeah. and it was kind of like a low-key story but cars 2 is just like oh great international espionage and what why are cars doing international espionage this is <laughs> nonsense i don't get it <laughs> this is just it's all high like high concept action and he does loads of fancy races and it's all flashing colorful it was and i'm just like the movie had yeah no and it's just heart, no and all of the meaning. jokes are kind of awkward and like yeah and i know people like, still oh, so like, yeah, Pixar elitists still. still rip into the first Cars. And to be honest, I really mm. enjoyed it when I first saw it. And I thought it had it had a lot of good going for it, even if even if now it seems pretty dull and has, like, a yeah. lot of really dumb jokes in it. But I thought the purpose of the movie was pretty great. But then, yeah, when I saw Cars 2, I was like, this isn't a movie. This doesn't... No, this doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm sitting in an empty theater watching it's a blank screen. It's marketing machine. It's fine. <laughs> um... So yeah, Cars 2, meh. Um, then I watched Hunchback of Notre Dame. Wait, you're talking about five movies? Yeah, I, I watched like one, two, three, four, five, six. I watched, well, I watched six movies. One of these is a lie, but yeah. Oh. What? Okay. I thought we were. Yeah, I thought wait, we were just gonna do one per week. Okay. No, I'm ahead, dude. All right, go ahead then. We're, we're, Talk about we're everything you we're watched. Eight and a half weeks watched. in, and I. I've watched nine movies. You're not as ahead as you say you Um, are, though, because one's a lie. Well, I've watched nine movies. One of these is a lie, but, like, in total I've got nine. I really hope this one's not a lie, because this is one of my favorite movies in the whole world. Hunchback and Notre Dame. It's a good movie. Yeah? I enjoyed it. Yeah, I I liked it. I'm not a huge fan of, like, Disney musicals, but it it had a lot of heart, and it was enjoyable, and The Bells of Notre Dame is a really good song, and just in general, it's good. Awesome. The next movie, Avatar. (sighs) <sighs> okay, let's go. What? What do you want? Let's go. Tell me if you me? really watched it or not. I did really watch it, and it was meh. What was the main character's name? That's all I have to say. Oh, god damn it. Uh, Jake 
something. Well, Jake something. What was the, Jake. What was the female name, main character's name? Are we talking which main? Oh, what the the Navi? Ch- I don't know. It, That's it actually okay a, because no, an I, N. I saw worry. that movie several times and I can never remember anyone's name. <laughs> yeah, like it has it has some good things in it, but it goes on for too long, and by the end, I'm just like, please kill me. That's I'll go into more detail in that later. The next movie, the final movie, before you have to decide which one you think is a lie, is The Truman Show. Oh. Which I knew nothing about. I knew nothing about, but a commenter uh, by the name of Xander Lenoir, I hope that I pronounced that right, said that I should watch it, and I did. And it was good. I enjoyed it. I knew nothing going into it. I thought, when I first saw Jim Carrey, I thought it was going to be a comedy. (laughs) Because I only knew the base concept of it's a guy and his life is a TV show. Yeah. So when I saw Jim Carrey at the start, I was like, is this a comedy? And then, no. It's, no, it's not. Yeah. I mean, there are it's some funny moments when he's going a little crazy. But no, that movie's fantastic. Yeah, oh, that's a great movie. It's, it's a good movie. And yeah, it, it started actually making me paranoid. Like, I watched it this morning <laughs> and I went to the supermarket. And on the way to the supermarket, like, I started being like, what if there are cameras here? <laughs> I mean, there probably are. Like they're probably making sure look... you're not stealing. Well, no, I was on like, a, I was on like a cycle track, and there were just trees next to me, and I'm looking at the trees like, is there a camera? There? <laughs> and then like, I walked past, I walked past some guy, and he like glances at me, and I'm like, are they watching me? <laughs> and I was, gen- I was genuinely like freaking myself out a little bit, and then I was like, but wait, if this was, if I, if my life was a TV show, they wouldn't let me watch a film like The Truman Show because that would out them. But then I'm like, what if it's a double bluff and they let me watch that? <laughs> As a, and Xander Noir is in on it, and he's told me to watch it so that I start thinking it's not because I've seen it. But I start getting into this like really elaborate, like, oh, oh it's man. nonsense. But yeah, it's a good film. I enjoyed it. There's a lot of like really powerful imagery in there. There's a lot of like genuinely just good stuff in that whole film. Yeah. It's it's well made. It's well built. It's good. Like, Which of those films do you think I'm lying about though? Um, laser laser star laser team. <laughs> laser, laser team? No. Team. No? Wrong. You didn't say Wrong. enough about that. I watched movie. Laser Team. That's because okay. it's really not worth talking. It's just it's just not as good as it could have been. Like that's all I really had to say. It's Laser Team is a film that if you're a really big fan of Rooster Teeth, you'll probably enjoy, but otherwise it's just kind of vaguely funny, but not funny enough to yeah. really sell. I've anyone. heard there are a lot of good the f- cartoons released by Laser by sorry, by Rooster Teeth. Yeah, I, I really like Rooster Teeth's content. I like um, a lot of their Let's Play stuff. I like a lot of their podcast stuff. And yeah, they make a lot of good content. It's just this film was let down by the writing, I think. The um, the action's good. The acting is surprisingly good. Like, for people who scream at video games for a living, the acting is solid. Like, like two of the stars, like, literally their jobs are to scream at video games. And yet, it's they do good acting. So... There's a thing. Do you want to know which film? I do you want a second attempt at a guess. Sure, let's guess till I get it. All right. Was it Avatar? No, I actually did watch Avatar. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> and it's ja- it's Jake Sully and Natiri. Natiri, <laughs> you're on Wikipedia. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm not. I watched Avatar, and I remember that. <laughs> you remember that, but you didn't. You pretended you didn't a minute ago. Of course, because you were trying to psych me out and other things. All right, you're pretty good at this. Yeah. What's your next guess? If you're actually going to go through all of them. How come you don't like Avatar? <laughs> I'm going to explain that later. Just later. Find out which one this is. It's going to be a, a really lie. long discussion. Yeah. Okay. It is. I have so many notes on Avatar. It's going to be great. <laughs> you're down to there. Alien, Deadpool, Cars Two, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and The Truman Show. And Shoot. I feel like there's at least two of those you can write off because you were all really, you were really convincing with all of those. I don't, I don't like this game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you liked it last month where it was easy. Cars two. Yeah, Cars two. That's okay. You don't need to watch I, that. Yeah, I, I don't need to watch that. No, please. Just <laughs> I, don't. I kind of wanted to, and then I thought, nah, it's not going to happen, is it? I don't have the motivation to do this. No, like, it's not worth it. From I read the Wikipedia page and I was just like, nah, I don't, I don't need to watch this. <laughs> I'm glad I got you though. I'm, I'm happy with that. You did, good job. Right, so 
I feel like I've conveyed my opinions on Alien pretty solidly yeah. already. I don't really have much more to say. I, I was just mainly annoyed at the cat thing. Um, <laughs> and and there's one scene where the chest buster comes out of um, John Hurt, and it's just like, this looks really fake and dated, but again, it was made in like 1969 or something. What, you mean when I've the alien a different comes, date out, of, every time I've said comes that. out of his body? Yeah, when it comes out of his chest, it's kind of like, it looks really fake. I don't remember um, that. But, I remember thinking it was pretty but neat. But again, it's it, it's an old film, so I can excuse that. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's all I have for Alien, really. Um, uh, yeah, the cat. Just stop. <laughs> Stupid cat. Deadpool. Me and you have talked about Deadpool, but um, I think De- Deadpool was solid. It was a genuinely good movie. It conveyed everything from the comics pretty well. It conveyed the character of Wade Wilson incredibly well, because I was worried they were just going to go full comedy, but they... They really did a good job of portraying that Wade is broken, and he's he's oh. genuinely a depressive, broken human being hiding behind a wall of jokes. Oh, that's kind of um, cool. Yeah, they they did a really good job with that. It's it's not like totally hammered in, but it is there. Like it's it's almost subtle sometimes. the The action is incredible. Every every action shot just looks great because they went balls to the wall, like and just did everything they could to make it look good. Because it's it's very clear when you watch it that it's made by people who care about the property and wanted to make the best Deadpool film they could. And especially with a low budget, like it's incredible. Um then other things like like Colossus looks amazing. <laughs> like he's he looks amazing and he's amazing as a character. Like everything about that portrayal of Colossus made me really happy. Um in fact I think some of the best lines in the whole movie were Colossus lines. Um, but I'm not going to say any of them because I don't want to spoil jokes for people who might go and see it later. Right. Um, just in general, it's it's a good way of... They told the story well, they got the character right, they thankfully cut a lot of the stuff from the comics from the Deadpool origin story because some of the stuff in the comics is total nonsense and I'm glad they cut it. Mm-hmm. Like, like in, in the comics, he, he gets haunted by all of the ghosts of the other people from the Weapon X program and like the whole death love story happens and it's just like, I'm glad they condensed it and didn't do any of that nonsense. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good film. It's a genuinely great film. I really enjoyed it. I think it was really good, like portrayal of everything. Really faithful. Great. Well, I was just going to say, it sounds really cool from all the, all the stuff I've heard about it. Um, yep. I feel like it's probably caters more to Deadpool fans than to new people. Although I've heard it's a good, um, Deadpool newbie film. Um, I think it is. Yeah, and if but I there's had, a lot of room, I think a lot. Oh my yeah, gosh! If you had, I'll I'll come in later. It's fine. No, I was saying, oh my gosh, because my cat just like jumped on the bed and spun around oh. and jumped back down. Um. Oh, I thought you were getting mad at me for interrupting you. No, no, no. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, I think if I had the money, I'd probably go see it, um, at the movies. But um, nah, I just don't think I want to be bothered with it. But um, that's yeah, fair. and I don't know anything about Deadpool except. His little cameos in Squirrel Girl. <laughs> I, I forget that those are a thing, and I love them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I think I think it is a really good film for new people because a lot of the really like hardcore jokes that only Deadpool fans will get are pretty subtle. So like they're not hammered in, they're not like obtuse. They're just kind of there for us to appreciate, and everything else in the film, like people who don't know about Deadpool, can appreciate. So I think that's good. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing it if it if the opportunity came yeah. up. The next one is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. All right. Moving on. Swiftly on. I really enjoyed it. Like, genuinely, I, I thought it was a great film. Of it, it's a it wonderful film. It was moving. Film. It really like, is, yeah. not going to lie. not going to lie. I it was actually in tears at parts of that film. Like, it genuinely hit pretty hard. It was, it was emotional, man. It's really like, well done. Yeah, like the friggin' scene where he's tied up and he's having all that stuff chucked at him, and oh, yeah. he just visibly looks like in distress, and I'm just like legit crying. Yeah, people go crazy at <laughs> like, that I'm scene. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Some people like, don't that like. It's just like harsh. Some people give that movie a lot of grief because of scenes like that, because they're like, "This is supposed to be a children's movie," and I'm like, "No, this is just a good movie done by Disney." Yeah. It's, it's already toned down pretty well from its novel adaptation. Um, because it is done by Disney, but I feel yeah. like I feel like they're generally. But I guess it's not completely faithful. But I mean, the the tone of the story is done really well. And yeah, it's dark. Even though he doesn't like get the girl at the end, it's still like a bittersweet kind of happy ending because you know everyone accepts yeah. him into society after he saves um, the cathedral. Yeah. 
but it's really dark and yeah i just i love the mood and i love the music it's absolutely beautiful I think it's just because I'm not a fan of musicals, but I, the only song I actually remember in the whole film was the Bells of Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. But that's probably just me. Like yeah. musicals don't really hit me that hard. Like I, it, like my memory of songs in films is pretty bad. Oh, you know really? the one thing that annoyed me about that film was the one thing. Why would they call a character Frollo? <laughs> the entire time I was, every time they said the name Frollo, I was either thinking of frodo from lord of the rings <laughs> so i was expecting someone to come in and be like mr frollo mr frollo or i was thinking of froyo <laughs> so i'm just i can't i can't take a villain seriously if every time he's on screen i'm thinking of frozen yogurt you know it's just not gonna happen it as good as that film is i just i don't there know there was one tiny thing it's a french name <laughs> that's not the movie's fault though that's also, the name of the book yeah, well, I know, but like, okay, it's, I think it's it's just a me thing, and it's not a fault of the movie. I just wanted to point it out because yeah. also I don't I don't like when characters have American accents in Disney films. I don't like it in Aladdin, and Aladdin's my favorite Disney film. Like, I just don't like that Aladdin speaks with like a sort of white bread American accent, and I kind of didn't like it for Quasimodo, but I kind of get why it has to be like that. Don't all Disney so. films have American accents? Oh, this. <laughs> The thing is, didn't Frollo talk in kind of a, a British accent, and then everyone else I guess kind, he, of he kind of had a weird... did almost pseudo French sort of things? It, he, it's just such a like, it's that Disney hero voice that all of them kind of had the same sort of voice. I don't know. I guess yeah, it, Frollo it, kind like... of had a weird like drawling cadence to his voice, and I remember yeah. um, um, you probably don't recognize him by his name, but um, Kloppen, the the guy who like sang the bells of Notre Dame, and he was like the storyteller. He was the the jester. Oh yeah, yeah, that guy. He's yeah. one of my favorite characters in all Disney movies. I love him. <laughs> um, but he, he definitely cool. had like kind of a like oh la, 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 like thing yeah. in his voice. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think it's just me, but like seeing a vista of Paris and then cutting in and the main yeah. character talking in that, it, it just for a second takes me out of it. And then about like about twenty minutes in, I can kind of adapt to it, but. At yeah. first, it always gets me, and I. For some I of those old Disney movies, they have, they'll usually bring in a pretty famous cast for some of the yeah. main characters. Like, um, I'm pretty sure Esmeralda was Demi Moore, um, and oh, Quasimodo I don't was. Know who that is? Quasimodo was Tom Hulse, which I know is. I, I don't think know who I think he's either. a big Broadway guy. He was in Amadeus. He played Mozart. Uh, okay, um, that's fair. And I guess they're really big singers, so that's why they chose their roles. Um, I loved yeah. I loved the song Esmeralda sang, um, and I thought it was pretty gutsy. I don't remember. To, it, I'll be honest. She sang "God Help the Outcasts." And she was in the cathedral singing to God, and everyone was praying uh, around her. Yeah. And I like that scene because I feel like it's pretty pretty gutsy to put that in you know a kids movie. Like here's a song about religion, and she's just gonna sing yeah. what she knows and what she feels, and uh, who cares? I yeah, I really like the message. And the way that the religious themes kind of... Because I'm not religious, but I quite liked the whole Frollo, stop being a dick, God ain't gonna like you, stop being yeah. a dick sort of thing. Like, I, I like that portrayal of religion as a be a good person sort of thing, and that movie kind of conveyed yeah, that really well. Yeah, because he was like this, this And also just the priest, message there was good. And he was a horrible yeah. villain because he was like trying to use his power to be like, I'm going to kill you unless you be my lover. And it's like, geez. Yeah. And it's like burning hellfire demons everywhere and esmeralda's in this church like i don't really think i don't know if i believe in god and i don't know if god cares about me but can you just like help my friends and um like helps out and it's yeah can you it's really make, sweet make froyo chill a bit you know oh my god <laughs> that wasn't even like a i didn't intentionally use the term chill because it's frozen yogurt but it kind of oh no i realized it after i said it <laughs> Do you want to do the Avatar argument? Because I feel like this is going to be a long haul. I, sp- I mean, I'm, I don't really have a lot to say in defense about Avatar. I just really liked it. But it was also one of okay, those movies gonna... that I don't totally understand. Because big sci-fi slash action movies, a lot of stuff usually goes yeah. over my head. 
Like when they're like, this is our mission. Right. This is what we're supposed to find or do. And I have that problem with superhero style movies too. Like there's always uh, okay. some object or some mission. And I'm just like, wait, I can't remember who half these people are or what side they're on. I just, I'm kind of watching it. And yeah, that's why. It, getting the message of it. That's why Deadpool's great. Cause in Deadpool, his mission is to make his face not ugly anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole driving force of it. <laughs> but no, like, okay, so Avatar, right? For like the first hour and a half, I was actually kind of enjoying it, right? Yeah. I liked I liked Jake Sully as a character, right? I th- Like the scene where he first gets the Avatar and he starts running because he's been in a wheelchair for so long and now he's got legs again and you see that genuine happiness on his face and it's genuinely quite moving. It's like, it's like oh, I care about this character because I've seen his plight. I see that he's been struggling. I see now... He's got this body, and I can see why he would want to keep it. Then I really liked the montage sort of thing where he, him and Natiri got closer, and they sort of grew as friends, and I liked that. Yeah. I thought that was good. But then it went on for too long. Like, by about an hour and a half, I was kind of like, yeah, but can this end? Can this... And then I, then I looked at okay. the timestamp, and I was like, oh, good, this is another hour and a half, great. And then it kind of started hammering in these, like environmentalist messages of like oh the forest is magic and oh and i just was like okay cool and then like the villains stopped being like for the first half the villains were just kind of like okay they're just businessmen but then around the second half they just kind of became completely unsympathetic like just horrible people and not there was no like they were it, it was hammered so hard that they were bad people that i i stopped caring about whether or not there was any moral ambiguity there or if you know what the issue was i just kind of was like okay these guys are bad these guys are good great you've moraled in you've just got this black and white morals amazing um by, by the like halfway through the visuals stopped being impressive as well so like <laughs> by the final war it was like okay james, james cameron clearly wants me to be impressed by these visuals but i don't care anymore yeah. <laughs> i don't really care like I also think it was it was impressive know. at first but like i think it's fair that he by wants to be so like, impressed no. Because he pretty much yeah. like invented all those all that technology while he was making the movie, so I don't know. I think if yeah, I was I guess, him, I would like... I would want someone to be impressed by the things I was making too. <laughs> Thing is, I was impressed at the start. Like at the start, I was like, "Oh man, these are these are really well built models, and the whole thing like the avatars look good and all that stuff." By the end, I'm just like, "Eh, it's just more of the same, basically." Um, and then like right at the end, they had all these tragic deaths. And by that point, I didn't care. I was just like, I don't care about any of these characters. I don't. The only person I really cared about the death of was the badass pilot chick because I think it's adorable that she did face paint on her own face in her own ship and <laughs> like painted her own ship. And it was like, why have you done that? It's so dumb. <laughs> but I loved it. It was just, it was stupid and adorable. Um, but yeah, I just, I just think it went on for too long. It got to the point where I was like, I don't care anymore. I just like it that got to the point fair. where any other film would have ended, and I was kind of like. Uh, also, I refuse the term unobtainium. Okay. I think you said that Tim said that unobtainium is a thing before Avatar, yeah, but I just I didn't don't look put it that in the script. I, it just it was so cringy. I just know. The other thing is, I find it really hard to believe and accept. Like, I'm all for suspending your disbelief, but I don't accept that that any of that would like evolve naturally. I don't. Why would like? They show that scene with the lizards that have like discs on their neck and then they propel themselves in the sky and it's like okay but that's dumb <laughs> nothing would evolve to do that to just float in the in the air like at grabbing reach for predators like no don't <laughs> shut up the thing is like i think this is just because of the cg at the time but like every single creature in that entire world was like it kind of had like slimy skin, basically. Nothing had fur, nothing had feathers, apart from the Navi that had like hair, but like nothing had fur feathers or anything. And it just kind of was off putting, like everything in this world kind of looks the same, even though they're trying so hard to make it diverse. So it kind of felt fake. Okay, and so I don't like. Those are some nitpicky complaints, but all right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. buy into everything pretty, being the internet. <laughs> I think, I think even yeah, this world true, has some really but... weird animals that I don't understand how they've evolved that way. <laughs> I guess, but I just... It's just, like, why would yeah. the dragons have ethernet cables in their heads? What benefit what? does it give to them? 
Well, you know how everything had an Ethernet cable that it could plug into the forest, or the Navi could plug in, and they had sex with their Ethernet cables? It was really dumb. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's how they had sex. They just, like, connected that way to, like, sort of be connected to each other, and they probably had sex the normal way. I think it- no, it was implied that they didn't have genitals, wasn't it? I don't think so. Didn't they- weren't they wearing, like, cloths and stuff over their crotches? Maybe? I Leave us a comment if you know the answer to that, because I think it was just the cables. I've heard a lot of people say you that, could be like, right, though. like, oh, the way they had sex was the way they also rode their horses. And I was like, I don't think that's, yeah, that's how that gross. was. <laughs> I, I don't, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I think that was just a way of connecting while with I'm another <laughs> living being. I guess. I guess. But while I'm nitpicking, I also want to point out that um, the guy playing Jake is Australian. And his Australian accent kept slipping through, <laughs> and it really irritated me. I like the Australian accent, it's my favourite accent, but if you're trying to do an American for the film, you stay American, you don't slip into Australian. Like, sometimes he even sounded kind of like English, and I'm like, James Cameron, cut that. Cut that out your movie, make him redo the line. It's... no. <laughs> the final point I want to make about Avatar is that Stephen Lang, who was playing the badass military a-hole, he wants to be Cable in a Deadpool sequel and I just want to say that I'm totally okay with that and I want that to happen pretty bad because he's awesome All and right. I can totally see him as Cable like I would love to see that but yeah basically what I'm saying, trying to say about Avatar is I probably would have enjoyed it if it was an hour shorter the only real issues I have with it were just that it dragged on and like there's a lot of tiny things that pulled me out of it but okay. I think it would have been okay it would have been pr- kind of decent yeah, those if it was tiny like things an are hour usually shorter able to be overlooked if you can if you can stand the length yeah. of a movie. And I guess that's fair. Yeah. I already explained in the last episode why I enjoyed Avatar. Like, I don't really notice things like, like you're talking about unobtainium. And whenever you mentioned that, I was like, I forgot that was a thing because that's the kind of like, but that was the sci- whole reason they right, did it. That's that like was... the whole like mission of a big story like that. Like, I feel like when someone makes yeah. a movie like this, they're like, they think of what they want and they're like, okay, I want it to be set on this cool world with this cool stuff and they're these really neat people and the main idea is that new people come in and some people fight it and some people have their whole lives changed oh and we need we need a reason why they're doing this let's make them look for this weird thing yeah and plot device. some people will want them to do that and some people won't and it's that last thing that i that always goes over my head i'm like oh uh, yeah, I, I forgot guess. that they had a mission like all i cared about was that <laughs> They were going into this world with these really neat people, and his whole, like, <laughs> mind was getting turned upside down by these people that he was falling in love with. Yeah. And that's what I cared about. Yeah, his life got flipped turned upside down. Oh, gosh. And he'd like to take a minute to sit right there and tell you all about how he became the prince of... Pandora. Uh, Pandora? Yep. <laughs> I forgot what it was called for a second there. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I remembered. Um... <laughs> yeah, well, he said to the cabbie, yo home, smell you later. I don't even know how I know the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme team. Like, I've never seen that show. I don't know how I know it. Oh, wow. I just do. I know. <laughs> I blame the memes. But anyway, yeah, so Avatar, eh. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It, it had good things. As I said, like, the, the first sort of, like, hour, I genuinely enjoyed. Like, I thought it was pretty good, but it just... From then on, I, every because when you're starting to get bored of a film, it become every all, every small issue you have with it becomes really obvious, and yeah. it's just kind of like, uh The the final film I watched was Truman Show. I think we already talked about how crazy, interesting, and good that is. Like, it's a great it's an film. Incredible, really movie. enjoyed it. And I was trying to yeah. think. I don't know if you can classify it as dystopian, um, but it has the same sort mm. of. Um, science fiction yeah, feel where he's in a world that he doesn't realize is the world that it is you know yeah. it, it's really eerie and creepy especially when you you're in on it but you you don't want to be in on it you're like oh no i can see the cameras don't uh, no stop it and yeah it's it's yeah. good i i really enjoyed it it's crazy to think that you can the way they completely manipulated not only his life and who he married and where he lives, but the way he thinks. Like, they constantly yeah. put certain things in the newspaper to make him be afraid of flying, and they yeah. made his dad drown at sea so that he would be afraid of going on the water, yeah. just so he would never leave that town. That that was that was the point where I was like, oh god, this is messed up. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, even in, like, 
in the travel agency, there's a poster behind him with a plane getting, getting struck, struck by, by lightning. lightning. And I'm like, and I'm like, this is the travel agency. <laughs> <laughs> this this is yeah. this is bad planning. <laughs> and I loved all but the yeah, little it's, things. It's, it's, like they had advertisements yeah. because the the Truman Show yeah. had no commercials, so his friends would push him up against a poster yeah. to talk to him, and it would be like, "Come eat this chicken," and and his wife would be like, "Oh, like I just bought this new thing from the store." Let's and make it's, this cocoa. Yeah, and it's dishwasher yeah. safe, and it has all these items. And he's like, "Okay, great." And she looks at the camera, like, "Wow." Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so eerie, and there are so many like subtle things in the background that you pick up on, and it's like, "Oh no, ah, no, stop it, stop it." <laughs> but it's it's a good movie. I have ranked all of the nine films I've seen this year. Would you like to hear my rankings? Yes. All right, number nine is Avatar. Okay. I think that's obvious. It's, I, I, I was going to yeah. say Cars 2, but it's you didn't horrible. watch it, so that's fine. Yeah, it, it would be Cars 2 if I had watched Cars 2. <laughs> you don't probably. even have to watch it to maybe know. I'd, maybe, maybe if I did watch it, I would love it, but like probably not. Number eight is Laser Team, just because it was kind of disappointing. It could have been better, I... Yeah, number seven's Alien because it kind of wasn't for me, but I appreciate everything it did. Hmm. Okay. Uh, number six is Fantastic Mr. Fox because oh, at this point we're getting into films. None of these are bad, right? It's just unfortunate yeah. that this is so you're mine because more there are ranking. Things. You're more ranking things not necessarily on their goodness, but on how much you like them. Yeah, it's okay. personal opinion. Okay, because otherwise this would be very shuffled. Otherwise, yeah. Laser Team wouldn't be above Avatar. I'm just going to say that now. <laughs> like, Avatar is a... It's a better made film, but I didn't like it as much as Laser Team. Yeah. So. And, like, I think Alien was probably but, better made more than you liked it. Yeah, yeah. Alien was definitely way... It, it. I can see why it's a classic, and I think it is probably from a... No, maybe not. But it would be definitely be higher if I was just going by value of, like, production and the skills that went into it and all that sort okay. of thing. But it's just personal preference. Number five is The Truman Show, because I really enjoyed it. I thought it a great film. Also, The Truman Show and Alien are both films I wouldn't have watched otherwise, but I did because of this project, and I'm glad I did. So people suggest films. In the comments, suggest films that you don't think I would watch. Yeah, It's easy. I only ever watch superhero films and animated children's films, so <laughs> if it's not one of those, I probably haven't seen it. Um... So yeah, leave me a comment. Number four is Turbo. Okay. And I, me I mentioned to you before we started recording that this ranking list would, you'd probably both love it and hate it, and this is the part you're gonna hate, is the fact that Turbo was my number four film yeah, this year because Turbo is, it's good. I know Deal you've got it. a DreamWorks fetish, so it's all right. <laughs> yes, it's that's what we would call it. Number three is Mad Max Fury Road, just because it's a really good film. My number two okay. Still is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yes! It's good. I don't think you'd like Fury Road, but I, I no? enjoyed it, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, Hunchback of Notre Dame, number two, it's it's a solid film. I really enjoyed it. Awesome. And then number one is pretty obvious. I saw it twice in the cinema. It's like Deadpool. I don't think anything this year is going to knock Deadpool off of that number one spot. Like, I'm thinking Doctor Strange might, Civil War might, but Yay. I don't know. Probably not going to happen. I'm so happy so, yeah. you liked Hunchback. It's been one of my favorite <laughs> movies for years, and I love sharing it with people. Uh, and Good. I'm glad, because I wouldn't have watched it if not for you. Yeah. So there And we go. there's a lot of people I know who are like hardcore Disney fans who have either not seen it or they just don't care about it. And I think it's because it's not really, it's not princessy, and it doesn't follow the normal pattern of a classic Disney film. But I love that it's so different, and I love it for yeah. what it is, and I love the characters... And it even appeals to, like, really small children. Like, when I was a really little kid, I loved the gargoyles, because they're just so goofy and dumb. <laughs> and you got Jason Alexander True. in there, <laughs> which is really funny. But, oh, man, I, I love feel that like film. As a kid, like, some of that would have probably scared me, like, as a young kid. Like, oh, yeah. obviously not when I was, like, 12. But if I'd watched that when I was, like, 6, I probably would have been scared of some of them scenes. Yeah. Like, the one where Froyo is, like, dancing in the fire, and, like, he's oh, being, yeah, like, horrifying. super spoopy. It's like, oh god. <laughs> like, yeah, it's good. Good film. So, yeah, that's been Across the Pond. Do you have anything else to say, QJ? You went silent. I'm thinking. Okay, I thought I'd lost you there. I thought the connection had gone. <laughs> I was like, no. oh no. 
that was so abrupt. I guess I guess we're done with this episode. I don't think I have anything else yeah, to well, say. Yeah, well, you said last month you were like, oh, next month will be really short, but it's not. It's it's longer. Has it been longer? Because I really? watched way too many films. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, you well, we're currently coming on movies. an hour, aren't we? Yeah. There's probably stuff I can cut, okay. though, so it's fine. Well, you need to watch fewer movies next month, and I need to play more games and read more books. Yeah, I probably will. I, I was kind of playing catch-up, because I only watched three in January, so I, I kind of had to catch up on that, and I'm now ahead, so I'll be right. All right. But yeah, I think next month I will probably be talking about Batman vs. Superman, because I think that comes out late March, I want to say. I, so I literally don't care about Batman for or Superman one bit. I mean, Nor do I, but I'm still gonna see I think it. <laughs> I, I think I saw Man of Steel because a bunch of friends were seeing it, and I was like, okay, I'll go. And I was like, all right, ah, okay. that was fine because I liked, I don't know, I liked his origin story. But as far as both of those characters, like for what they are and for what they do in comics and movies, yeah, I'm just it, like, I don't care about you. I don't care about your rivalry. Like, just make a whole Wonder Woman movie, <laughs> and I would love it. Yeah, Wonder true. Woman all the way. I just, I have a friend who who's really into it, and I want to talk to him about it. I want to just rip into it because DC are lame and mm -hmm. Marvel are better. Obviously, The Dark Knight was great. So, I mean, if it's a well-made movie, yeah, I mean, the character probably won't matter too much. The, obviously, The Dark Knight Rises is the best film of the century. Okay, bye everyone. See I you mean, next month. Bane, right? <laughs> are you gonna cut me off before I start doing the Bane impression? Like, what is this? No, do the Bane. <laughs> I was born in the darkness. Tune in next month for Across the Pond. <laughs> okay. I wish people could see this. But my cat's outside and he's meowing at me. So when you were doing that voice, his jaw was moving up and down and it looked like he was doing me. Ah, <laughs> oh, QJ. Are you a I appear to be a cat. I was wondering what would break first. Your spirit or your body. <laughs> That's Bane for you. <laughs> I don't know how good that's actually going to sound. <laughs> Probably not good at all, right? Espeon said goodbye. <laughs> it just sounded like you were like squeezing her like a squeaky toy. No, I just picked her up out of my lap and she didn't like it. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh man, are we done now? Alright. Happy February, everybody. Right, but Bye everyone. Hope you enjoyed Valentine's Day. I guess. I, I didn't. <laughs> I saw Star Wars on Valentine's Day and a lot of kids were in the in the cinema and it really irritated uh, me. I worked at an ice cream parlor, so I was out till nearly midnight. Oh man. Also, Star Wars isn't in the 5252 because it was a rewatch and I'm not counting that, so yeah, uh -huh. that's why. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to end my recording now. Okay, okay bye. 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 bye.